What is going down, everyone? It's time for Mojo Break the Hype, episode 334. We're in a hotel now. Uh, they kicked us out. Uh, got too many breaks to do, so different like background that we're doing now. But no, we're dressing this place up. New studio. We've got lots of stuff to talk about today. Wemby 101 was pulled. Caitlin Clark's throwing down 41 points in a big game. And we also got 2024 Bowman. The checklist is out. We're going to dissect it, tell you, you know, what teams have the most power, what rookies to chase, what first bowman's are ranked the highest so uh definitely check that out and for you guys looking for new releases brand new sterling baseball is out today we got revolution basketball on friday which i know is c-rad's favorite Woo. and uh, if you guys want to save 10 percent off on those we don't run too many coupons use code my mojo and it's a limited time only you get 10 percent off any of those new releases on mojobreak.com so load up now save big and chase galactics chase logo mans in flawless we're still doing we're also got sterling logo mans cut autos dual autos all that fun stuff so uh we're gonna start off with this week in the hobby uh big wemby the dumb alien drawing card that i hate was pulled <laughs> and uh apparently it's the biggest dynasty card in the history of dynasty cards is that truth or fiction? Hmm. Ah, ooh. Interesting. It's, it, it's kind of disrespectful in a way because it's a baseball product, right? That's, and, yeah. and, we're, and we're saying that a basketball guy is the biggest dynasty card ever. Now, not to say that that card isn't a huge pull. Obviously, it is. Um, but yeah, I'm calling. I'm calling a little. I'm calling a little fiction on I that one. I was going to say, wasn't the Gunner one of one the logo rookie auto pulled at Mojo? If I'm not mistaken, I thought it was pulled. Though. Yeah, it was out of transcendent. Yeah. Okay, my mistake. Uh, it was pulled out of transcendent. Uh, well, regardless, I, I agree with. I kind of agree with C Red sentiment that it's yeah, a disrespectful. It's, it's a baseball product. First, <laughs> I'm not, but at this, but yet there is a little part of me of like. But there's not, there's never been anything like this out of yeah. this product, yeah, and like the uniqueness correct. and all the the goofiness of it. Like it's it, a big card. Don't get me wrong. It's huge. It's huge. huge. Card, yeah. it, it, I I think we could say this pretty safely. I think that's, hmm, is that right now, a top five Wemby card, pretty easily. Is that a top five Wemby? I will say yes, but I get I get why people don't like the card yeah. because. It's, the funny drawings on it. Yeah, I well, that's what I was gonna say. But are blame you, are, Wemby for that. That's him. Are you gonna buy a five hundred thousand dollar Lambo and put like a Blink one eighty two sticker on the back of it? <laughs> on, I mean, on the, you know what I mean? I like, mean, no, you're not. And and I don't know. You know, we always say people at these companies deserve raises. Whoever had this idea deserves to get fired because you just defaced a high end card. Like it would have been okay with an inscription, I think. But to have him draw an alien, which it could have been a worse drawing. It could have been. I mean, he's not that bad at drawing. Yeah. Draw him, drawing a mustache, drawing a little, I don't know what he drew on his. Yeah, uh, yeah, little. So, so that one on his face is the really the only one I have. Uh, I, I take a, I have an issue with. All the other drawings, I'm okay with. Even the mustache, I would have been okay with. But that that like teardrop or yeah. whatever he got on the side of his it face. Say, it looks like a teardrop. Yes. Yeah, it might be yes. sweat. Yeah, okay, it might yeah, be yeah, sweat. Sweaty, a little sweaty, some, some yeah. alien sweat, I guess. I mean, this is like I think there's a there's a I guess for some folks there's a fine line between like showing off your personality and then making it an almost like now it's just a joke. Like I think Josh Young on one of his one of one in like Heritage put like on his on his on his real one auto one of one put a little mustache and then said love the hobby or something like that. Like I think that's like. The perfect amount of have some fun with it. Also in a product where you're like, it's heritage. Like, it's fine. Like you're you're it's not the most expensive box versus yeah, people are spending a lot of money on, on Dynasty and they might be and like, this I is want what, that And this is what you guys created. You wanted more inscriptions, you know, like I'm tired of looking at the same <laughs> old the autos. Fault. And this is what you get. That's the result. You can't have it both ways. But it almost like reminds me, and I know I'm really harping on this, but maybe I'm two of your purists for high end cards. It almost reminds me if you're driving like down Beverly Hills or somewhere nice and it's just beautiful and there's just graffiti on one of the walls. That's what it reminds me of. It just defaced the be the beautifulness of that area of that card. Like maybe he could have put like my first dynasty or my first Yankee card or something on there, but we we put drawings on there. Yeah. Or just uh, or just the one UFO or one alien. Right. Because uh, I will say this, because we pulled the, there's not a lot of Wemby's, first of all, in Dynasty, and we were lucky enough to pull also the number to 10, and I'll say that that card is gorgeous. Yep. Like, 
you can see it in the picture, but in person, it's a gorgeous card. His auto, clean auto, um, nice Yankees patch, right? No, no inscription on that one, of course, but. Yeah, when you compare the two, it's like, damn, it's almost like, damn, which one do you prefer? Like, I know I get it, the one one is worth way more because it's a one Uh But in terms of the, the way the card actually looks, aesthetics, like, I think the number to 10 is probably a better looking card. Yeah. And I know he's playing good, and he's lighting up the NBA, and his cards are selling well, and that's great. And, and, but what, what, what's their record? I mean, well, to, the, to their credit, they've actually been playing much more competitively since post-All-Star break. Yeah, like they are going to they're, be. They're, they're, they're going to turn this around. I, I almost feel like they're going for. They need another. They're trying to go for another. Eighteen high, and fifty eight. They're not good. Yeah. Eighteen and fifty eight. They're not good. So which, how many years of Wemby at eighteen and fifty eight at this point of the season is he is not going to work out? I mean, it's year one. Is I, I did see God. What where, where where was it on ESPN? They're like, how long will Wemby be? I'm like, guys, it's year one. He's a rookie. We knew this wasn't going to be a good team. Like, yeah. it's okay. Are you guys going to still be like apologists, like you guys are with Luca? Are you guys gonna still oh, be with yeah. Wemby? But Luca, Luca's no. been into the the second round twice early in his career too, right? That's true. Um, um, He's been to a Western Conference. And they are the fifth, they're the fifth seed. Seen. They're playing a little bit better. Maver- but... Mavericks. Luca has been a pretty good player. Uh, what I will say about the Wemby situation is that if you actually if you look at his advanced statistics when he's actually on the floor because he doesn't play I think he only plays like twenty five minutes or so mm-hmm. thirty minutes when he's on careful. the floor with them they're like the plus Leaps and the plus minus is like crazy yeah. positive yeah and then he sits down and they're like oh god he is also <laughs> a transformational guy where there are there are absolutely free agents to be looking at the Spurs playing against them and going. Oh, that looks fun. Bro, That's I, I want to be part of that. Like he is that type of guy where he can totally change. He's gonna he's gonna change everything about that. Make that a destination spot. I uh, I don't know. Obviously, I don't I don't know anything about the future, but um, I would love to see a Luca Wemby combo team. <sighs> <laughs> that's chip. That's chips right there. You don't have to go. Hey, if Luca's like, I'm not digging it here in Dallas. I don't have to go that far. <laughs> and then you and Dan will have to convert Good. to Luca lovers. I, I I just want to point out these Luca Kevin Love same player. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I just, let's just let's just point out these stats because I think there's a case to be made that like this is like they're saying he should win Defensive Player of the Year dude, as a rookie. Yeah. It's wild what he's done. He's he's averaging twenty one point two as a rookie. Next closest rookie is Brandon Miller at seventeen. Uh, he's got ten and a half rebounds a game. Next closest rookie is Chet with seven point nine. Uh, Not even close. He's got three point seven assists per game. On yeah. top of it all, he's got three and a half blocks per game. Three and a half blocks is the one that stands out the most. It's uh, yeah. Like teams are finding out this entire season. It's like. Damn, I cannot go in the paint against. You just can't do it. Like you, you don't. You, you, you. These guys are hesitating every time they get in the paint. Yep. They're like, "What should I do? Should I, I know I can't go up. Let, let me just pass it out." You know what I mean? Like it's, that. Yeah. He's so ridiculously tall and athletic. I mean, you know, I, I obviously I'm playing devil's advocate on some of this stuff. Of course, but yeah. He he is living up to the hype so far. And and one thing I have noticed by uh, going to target and walmart is like the retail revival has came back and i think yep. a lot of that is based on Wemby. Wemby. you know the fact that you can go get your monopoly blaster prisms you can go get your prism blasters or whatever product he may be in and those are now gone from the shelves again as you know almost the pandy when people were lining up and fighting yep. each other over stuff yep so. yep, yep. And, it, and I'm I'm looking back at some of the recent drafts. I'm trying to I'm trying to make a case here. Zion has, is having a nice year. Pelicans are having a nice year. Um, but in terms of number one picks in the last few years, you could argue. I know Anthony Edwards, Paolo. It's actually been a good run. Actually, the last couple it's of been years, been a good run. Um, so the number one picks have been playing well. Yeah, yeah, they have. But Zion's having a big year and he's getting off on the yeah, right foot. And yet, healthy. despite that, can you still say maybe Wemby is the one who like? Is is absolutely meaning every bit of the hype, and not near those other guys didn't have nearly the hype behind them, and yet Wemby is meaning every bit of that hype, and in Zion a way was sort of pretty exceeding. hype though. I mean, he was very was hyped up there. Yeah. He was very very hyped, but I, I I do think Wemby was on a different it, it was on a different level you, entirely. Yeah, yeah, I can't I can't yeah. disagree with that one. Yeah, it's pretty wild that the, the hype that's been around him, and not only is he met it, I think he's exceeding in a lot of ways, and like you said, it's it's making. It's things that don't happen in this card market 
for like base cards of his or whatever it may be like the prices are maintaining and in some cases going up it's pretty wild and that's what kind of segme- segues into the you know your favorite product is, is is i am i am definitely interested with revolution coming out on yes. friday it's a little bit of a cheaper price point for a hobby box it's not about the autograph and it's you know the galactic chase is usually Ooh. one per master 16 box case yeah master one per case. master case I mean, let's early predict. What do you think a Galactic Wemby goes for? Ooh. Ah, okay. Oh, no. Um, no, I mean, obviously the market has come down on Galactics, even though I still, I still push it like crazy. Like I'm telling people like all the time, I'm like, you guys, this Galactic Parallel is still one of the most rarest parallels you can go after for basketball if you collect any particular player. So I'm going to say Wemby Galactics out the gate. Um, it's going to be at least four to five K. Wow. So almost up there with like a downtown or a kaboom. I mean, uh, yes. um, which maybe may, do you think that it, a galactic will be and kaboom will be one of the same as far as pricing? I would say so. Yes. I'm trying to find out what Luca kaboom might go for a little bit more just because it has that, it has that, like, you know, collector prestige to it. Like, like, like mainstream people love the kaboom, mm-hmm. but like the hardcore collectors know the galactic is way more rare. And it looks like uh, a Luca, as of March 18th, a 9.5, the old Beckett slab Dan, Dan, Dan loves, uh, 3,600. So oh, for far. Luca Galactic? The Luca Galactic rookie. What about a so. Luca Kaboom rookie? Let's, let's compare. Luca Kaboom, and that would have been out of, would it still been out of Absolute back then? Um, it, was, it, was still, it was still crowned in 1819. 13,600. Oh, man. So massive difference. Massive difference. Yeah. So if you're if you're saying then that, if we're taking those numbers and we're saying that the four to five k on a galactic that means that the kaboom's going to be like twenty thirty k maybe that's why uh, I'm telling like most people in the know crown royale is going to be a crazy one because you not only have the Victor Wemyam kaboom you have the first Tim Duncan autographs oh is it going to be in crown royale finally yes man Spurs pot going to be going crazy. Jeez, that's going to be nuts. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, you know, also don't take away the fact that Revolution has all those numbered cards, too. Yep. The Cosmos, yep. the Cubics. All the pretty looking uh, cards. Yep, you're right. All those par- beautiful parallels that come out of Revolution, man. I'm a big fan. And they do have a one-on-one, right? They have a – they've never done a one-on-one. They do have a Lava number to 10. That's right. Um, they've never done a one-on-one base ever. But I wouldn't – you know, I haven't looked at – I don't know if a checklist is out yet necessarily. I think it is. And I don't think they have a one-on-one again this year. They may eventually do that the, eventually. The biggest change They do have I one-on-one saw, autos, though. The biggest change I That's saw right. is there is about. some – that doesn't say what it is exactly. It just says SSP rookie variations. Mm. That's all we know. That there's a new super short print rookie variation of some kind. Got it. They got to. They have to. They got to. Yeah. They don't got autos of the other kids, so They got to do Yes, I mean, use that code that we we, uh, we mentioned at the beginning of the show, uh, My Mojo, and you can get in some Revolution, which is already posted on the website. Yep, we, right? got so. mo- we got a lot of cases for you guys posted up already. Yeah, so that's going to be a banger. Chase those cards. I mean, and the good thing about Revolution, too, is that the the rookie base isn't really a hard chase. I mean, they may not be that valuable, but yeah. they do come out. So. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, you're getting uh, one box of Revolution for the price of, like, six boxes of... Uh, Prism. Prism. So, yeah. hobby, that is. Yeah. I also like Fast Break. I thought we were just talking about that off-air, that uh, Fast Break Prism at, like, the five six $600 price Good point. range, yeah. It, it, a lot of colors, because they're specific to just Fast Break with the discos. So, um, you know, get your Wembys and uh, get those things graded. Get them ready. So, um, also, uh, we've got Sterling, which is a nice uh, high-end baseball product on the heels of Transcendence. And Immaculate Football, which it's so crazy how these seasons go in the hobby. I feel like now football is the third sport, you know, because it's it not, is the third sport currently. Yeah. Right now. yeah, it definitely is right now. But and consider, yeah, all the Wemby stuff and baseball's got a great rookie class. And we're all collecting baseball at the moment. That's not to say that, you know, some of some of these football products yeah. recently have been better than others. Um, but, the, you know, it's it's still it's still a, a pretty good market right now. But, yeah, it is third. I would say it's third right yeah. now. Currently, yeah. might even be fourth with the Bedard. I was Hockey about to say craze. Bedard. Yeah, with Bedard. Yeah, so. I think it's an all Bedard set coming out here pretty something like that. pretty quickly, pretty yeah. in the next week or so. So, yeah, you're right. It's kind of like maybe tied for third. Crazy. So flawless came out last week. We ripped a ton of it. Uh, a lot of a lot of stuff going down. We still have cases uh, breaking on MojoBreak.com. So check that out. Um, 
arguably the biggest uh, triple logo man was already pulled, so I wanted to discuss that. Giannis, LeBron, and KD. Uh, KD on the Suns on this card. Um, which I don't like about it is that they're, I mean, they did center the LeBron with the 75, but they're, they're not the same logo mans aesthetically, you know, I'd like them to be the same ones, but, uh, Mr. Whiteback or whoever's running Mr. Whiteback's account now, I don't know, it's F Jerry or whatever is saying that he's <laughs> predicting the card to be 250 K. Is that a good assessment or do we think it's lower? Uh, ba- okay. So my opinion, give my, my opinion based on the, the one that we pulled and that sold, an auction for like 300 plus of buyers premium i think that's high for that one i think so too uh, because i think it's it's where it should be not worth a significantly less than the one we put but it's definitely I, I don't put it on even like i don't put it at the same level uh when you're when you're comparing it to the the steph luca and lebron all three 75th anniversary logo mans so i i say i say maybe 150 to 200 range is is, is, is i like that 250 though that's that's approaching the triple logo man that we pulled yeah 200 yeah. felt like the right number on the <clears throat> high end there for that one and yeah you're right the thing is like you you know if anyone wants to think like we're you know like oh it's the one we pulled is still a little more no it's like you said it like having three of those 75th anniversary logo mans it makes a big difference makes it totally different and frankly the group of players like the hobby loves luca uh, Steph, the 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 best, you know, are, yeah, Steph and LeBron, the two defining players of of this era of basketball, too. So yeah, yeah it kind of puts in a different stratosphere. What Panini needs to be doing is going out, talking to Vanessa Bryant, and being like, "Let's, you know, what what do we got? Let's, what do we let's yeah, how do we figure let's, out let's, the code for the last true. for the last year of flawless right. potentially? Yeah, and then yeah. then there could be so many opportunities of different triple logo mans that would be the ones. Oh man. <laughs> Or better yet, better yet, better yet, maybe Panini doesn't get it. What if Fanatics talks to Vanessa Bryant, and then two years from now, maybe we have a yeah. Jordan, LeBron, Kobe. I, yeah, yeah, that would be amazing. You know what? I'm uh, now that you mentioned it, I, I know we're getting ahead of ourselves because we we the new the new flawless just came out. But like I was saying, potentially the last year of flawless is next year with the license. Anyways, you know they're probably going to still produce yeah. it, but with the license, potentially is the, the last year. If they can pull that off, that's our, that's going to be amazing, right? If they can pull that off for the last year of Flawless. But next year's Flawless is already shaping up to be, like, literally insane. Because you're going to get the Chet Holmgren's that, didn't, that weren't in this year's because they, they are, they're going to be able to acquire those jerseys from that he played this year as an f- actual rookie. And then you're going to have the Wimbayama logo mans. And then you're going to have the Tim Duncan logo mans with the autos. You see, like, next year's Flawless is already shaping yeah. up to be literally insane. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, would the – if they do a dual logo man with Chet and Webb and Yama, does that exceed 250K? Ooh. You know what it largely depends on? I don't think Wemby's hype is going to die down, but it largely depends on where Chet is at. Now, yep. now the Thunder team, they're not going anywhere. They're going to be good for a very long time. But – Will Chet Holmgren be the number one or two guy there? Yeah, is the question because Jalen Williams is so good. Shea Gilgis has obviously been the number one guy there, yeah. and and he's a you know he's a he's not a big he's a he's a uh, guard. So it's I think it's going to be largely depend. I think it's still going to be worth. Look at how much Scott, look at years later. Look how much Scotty Barnes is still going yeah. for. Yeah, and he's the guy from twenty twenty one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So redemptions weren't yeah in stock anymore. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. What, what else? Would it be better to have a Duncan Webb and Yama logo man just dual, or would you throw a third Spurs player? On? Oh, you got to put David Robinson on there. Do you though? I think absolutely. I th- absolutely. I think, think as you a do. three big as man, a, yeah. I mean, you. Yeah. I, I think as a Spurs, I, but I do like I like the Timmy and Wemby. Probably I, one more. I bet you they do one of Tim, Tim Duncan, and Wemby, but I, I almost That's guarantee. That's a game used <laughs> Tim Duncan jerseys. I so guarantee far. they're going to throw a David Robinson, Tim Duncan. Just the lineage of the number one, number one picks, I, all ideally, the Spurs big I, men. Ideally, they need to pull off both. Yeah. Because you drive that. You got to do that. Say you have a chance of getting a Wemby by himself. Yep. And then you have a chance of getting a Tim Duncan and Wemby. And then you have a chance of getting the David Robinson, Wemby, and, and Tim, Tim Duncan. Duncan. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're, you're, just, you're just making, you're just strengthening the product. Yeah. yeah, I think it's, that's a slam dunk for me, that, that triple. And I know we've noted some of the biggest hits we've pulled. We had the uh, Giannis uh, championship uh, tag, uh, number to two, which that's a big, that's a big card. Uh, Chet, a uh, lot of Chets. A lot, lot of Chets. A lot of Paolo's. Two vertical RPAs we pulled. 
Which ones? Apollo Bunkero. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, two verticals. The like the pro- rookie patch auto. I pulled two of them, like back-to-back days. Oh, RPAs. Yeah. Uh, and then I know we pulled the Halliburton Logo Man auto. That, that was probably the, yeah, that was the biggest Logo Man that we have that we got so far. But we still got a couple cases left to get some Logo Mans for you guys. Yep. And there's still a bunch of triples. I think there's only been yep. a couple pulled. So yep. Yeah, it has not been that many pulled so far. But in terms of the big names, yeah, like loaded product this year, flawless. Like the probably the most loaded I've seen flawless ever. Yeah. And then we get into Kalen Clark, man. I mean, I was watching that game on uh, Monday against LSU, and and, and it, she was out there running a clinic. But you know, it's it's been a crazy run, and and I haven't watched so much women's ba- women's basketball tournament. I don't watch even most of the guys' tournament, to be honest with you. But like, yeah, I've actually same. tuned in to this because it's like it's all like must see TV with her. Um, the interesting thing is, and I, we've got pricing and stuff like that. I heard that. Ice Cube offered her five million for the big three, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then does Little Dirk own a team in the big three? Probably. He offered her ten million <laughs> to play for his team in the wow. big three. So what I did, I went down a rabbit hole, and I'm like, well, who? Let's play guess that price or guess that uh, salary. Okay. Uh, uh, there's a, a woman on the Vegas Aces, and I forget her name, but they won a championship last year. Mm-hmm. She is the highest. Probably paid, Asia Wilson. Asia Wilson. Sure. She is the highest paid WNBA player currently. What do you think she makes a year? Oh, probably under a million dollars. I right would now. say one point five. Maybe, maybe, maybe a million. Maybe just straight under. There, uh, there are two year deals. Most of them that yeah. I've seen, two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, a year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, why the hell Angel Reese want to go to WMA? She makes gonna, two million right well, now. Well, uh, here's the thing: if they're gonna make so much money in mark in in sponsorship deals, like they are going to, it, and and also. This is going to not be – that is not going to be the number in a few years is what I'm uh, – Right, and, I, and yeah, obviously it needs to go It's going to change. And, and, and we've got a lot of stars coming yeah. out with even Juju yep. in, on deck as well. Um, uh, you know, Paige, B- Paige Beckers, you have uh, yeah, we Cameron Brink from Stanford. Van Lilla, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of talent. There's a lot of household names that – Or Van Lith. Right. Sorry. There's a lot of household names – uh, that uh, the yeah, the, it's going to be a flood of talent here. I mean, because that would be crazy. I mean, I'm assuming if she took a big three deal, that would be she might still play both. Because I'm like, yeah, the money's like obviously ten million dollars. That's crazy. She still keeps her nil and she can play basketball for the big three, but you don't really get that like trophy, right? You can't really. I mean, there's a trophy for the big three, but like. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't have the same prestige. Like and you know what? Out. I'm, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm gonna say something about the big three. Has, has, has anyone in here watched a big three game yes. in the last in the last few years? The last few years, okay. Because, <laughs> because I think we all had that like curiosity the first couple of years. Yeah. But then, like, I don't know if anyone's noticed the rosters because that first year it was like, oh wow, you've got like. Uh, it was, there was like names that we all grew up with. Part, part of that is also like um, you know Ice Cube has come on and said like yeah. he, he's getting blocked from being able to maneuver how he wants to maneuver with the with that. Sure, league, you know yeah. what I'm which there's a little part of me that's the NBA is like, do you really think they're worried about you that much, man? That you've got like f- you know 50, 60 year olds running up and down the court, and the NBA is shaking in their boots about. I don't think they're the, shaking the their level boots, of but, play. but maybe the NBA just doesn't want no competition. Yeah, I guess yeah, so. Yeah. I guess Even so. If it's small. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Because obviously the big three is never going to compete with the NBA. So if but I'm, as, as yeah. a side league, it, it, it could be fun. Look, I get the money. The money talks. I get that. But if I'm Caitlin Clark, I'm also like, really? You want me to play against like you know? Uh, yeah, I can't. Uh, John Camper. Right. You, know, you like want me to play against like fifty-five-year-old Penny Hardaway? And would I get like? No, I'm sorry. Like. I'll pass. I'll go get ready for the summer. And, oh, yeah, I'm going to sign. Also, is that cha- – right. yeah, I mean, obviously, Ice Cube's got to do what he's got to do. And if I was the owner of the big three, I'd be doing the same thing. And also, but, I'm going to go sign my $100 but is that like million dollar only lifetime good deal enough tonight. to play against old men as opposed to like- – Right. That's what I'm saying. Almost ease I, – I, I get what they're doing. And I don't think there is this, like, backhanded compliment part of it, too, you know. But – if, yeah, if I'm her, I'm just like, nah, there's there's so many other opportunities. I don't think that does anything for the women's game. It doesn't do anything for her. It does everything for the big three. I mean, Panini signed, obviously, Caitlin Clark to an exclusive deal, uh, hoping that she does go to the WNBA because that would be a killer. Right. 
if she's like, yeah, I'm going to the big three only exclusively. Which would be insane. You know, and then you can't even put her in WNBA <laughs> products. I mean, well, I or, the, or then Panini would have to make a, a big three. Yeah, yeah, just one chase, right? It would be absolutely wild. He no, would she, love that. He's like, hey, we got a trading yeah. card deal. I yeah. think that's what you got to realize. She doesn't need it. The big three does. They absolutely need her to be there, which is why like they're I said, making Like I said, if it was offers. me, I'd be doing the same thing. I mean, 100%. Imagine, sure. Like, yeah. Like, what kind of sure. press that would get. So I mean it's it's crazy and I'm and I'm happy as a as a father with two daughters to yep. see you know um and and I'm sure in the same boat as as, yep. as seeing like this progress and and seeing more eyeballs on this and yeah. honestly like I've said in I think it was like two or three shows ago like uh, the women seem a little bit more cerebral on the court man they 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 seem to kind of the the flow of the game like they understand it a little bit better like the intuition's a little bit better well, it's I not as you, much raw athleticism yeah, yeah. I, I think you heard like i feel like draymond did a great job a few years ago uh draymond green talked about like why he prefers watching women's basketball a lot of times he's like because it's fundamentals it's all yes. like it's exactly what you learn when you're playing basketball yeah. so it's yeah like, because the nba yeah. is a different brand of basketball sure. it's not like it's not pure basketball in in a sense because they they get away with a lot of things that the refs don't call obviously for obvious reasons for entertainment purposes, mm-hmm. right? And then, so the game's a little bit more embellished in the NBA. It's it's it is it is part entertainment, you know, like they have to entertain people. So yeah. things like the, you know the, the 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 maybe the offensive defensive schemes are not it's not to say like, you know, they're not high, there's guys that are super high level and those guys are super successful in the NBA because they're outplaying everybody. Like guys like LeBron, guys like Steph, right? But like yeah, you're right as a team sport Maybe like you know women's basketball, maybe at the college level, you know what I mean at those levels. European like like international basketball, it's like more of a pure. Well, I was gonna say they didn't have that you know the height difference, right? You don't have those like Wemby's. But uh, interesting enough, this person played in two thousands, played for the San Antonio Silver Stars. Margot Didek was seven foot two. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, so it's like kind of funny that it's San Antonio, and I was she gonna mention Robin Yama. San Antonio. Just what? The, what the hell, man? Why? Did, it's like a magnet for like seven foot people. Like you go there. <laughs> I bet you you go to San Antonio, and it's just like everybody is just like it's it's just what it is. Everyone's tall. And, and Caitlin Clark's fairly tall, right? Yeah. And I, you know, we were talking about like the fundamentals and all that, but I think what makes this present moment for women's basketball so exciting is having someone like Caitlin Clark, where you're like, whoa. Oh, like bringing the flair, bringing the excitement, Angel Reese, bringing the personality and all that, like bringing that, like injecting that into this, to this. And man, it's going to be really exciting in WNBA. Yeah. They both committed. I think Angel Reese announced today uh, that she officially is going WNBA. Um, I've seen some people liken this to like, this is our, our generation's moment of like uh, a magic versus bird sort of rivalry here with, with Caitlin Clark uh, and Angel Reese, where it's going to lift the game and take it to heights that we've never seen before. So you would hope so because like, I'll say one thing, Sabrina Anescu was supposed to be the same, like have the same, like she came in with the same type of hype. And then, like, not to say, like, she's not having a, um, a, a pretty good career so far. She's, you know, she's playing well, obviously, for the WNBA. Almost but, beat Steph. I mean, yeah, but it, but it, it, but WNBA is still in, like, this kind of, like, the same situation mm-hmm. that they've been it's in. It's going you know up I mean? for sure, but, yeah, you're right. And I think it also, like, she's now she was the, She was as hype as she Kayla was. Clark was. She was. Or is. But, and she's, like, probably the second or probably the third, maybe even third best player on her current team right now. Now, her team yeah. is also really good. But, yeah, you're right. And so, it's going to have to be, you know, and for Caitlin Clark, it's also a perfect fit. I think Indiana's got the number one pick, so she's going to stay in the Midwest. She's going to stay around there. Where uh, do the where do the where does Steph's team fall in the draft? The which one? The, the new oh, not till next year. Oh, the expansion. Okay. Do they automatically get the first pick? I think so. They're like Caitlin Clark, stay another year. Well, that or I don't know. <laughs> That'd be a great Juju, draw. That'd be great for say, us, dude. Yeah. I don't know when Actually Juju go to the, uh, the games in, yeah. in San Francisco. I think I think for WNBA that you have to stay at least four years, right? I think you have to stay at least four years in college. So they're gonna miss Juju Watkins by a couple of years. But it's like, damn. That would have been, you know. Well, who knows? Maybe, maybe the maybe they'll be bad for a couple of years and they get the number one. Pick. So yeah, I think we're. Uh, I think the deal with Panini is active in May or, or it maybe just even. started on April first. Okay, so April, yeah, it so is one month. So that's how Tops was able to get that set out, right? Which I looked at it and I was like, ah, eight hundred fifty. Yeah, and it's then not I came, as enticing. But I came back the next day; it was still available, and I bought it because I was like, oh, you know, I'm gonna keep it sealed, and you know. 
just just cause. But this this leads me into like some of my next questions for you guys because, um, and and great notes here is uh, Clark's first Bowman Superfractor Auto sold for more than any other woman's sports cards. Would you advise collectors because we know the WNBA rookie card is going to be on the horizon at some point? Would you sell all of this college stuff because? Traditionally, the, the the pro sport one is going to be the one you want, right? I mean, if we're talking traditionally, yes, of course, 100%. Um, but we're also talking about a very niche market still currently with WNBA cards. Um, and then I kind of I kind of think like, you know, there's a reason why college football is so is so crazy. And like the, those fans will show up for like the, the, in terms of buying their teams, their colleges cards, right? Football cards and stuff. So I kind of feel like she has such a big hype around her. And if she, if she can pull this off this championship with, with, with uh, Iowa, then maybe like those hardcore Iowa collectors will still value well, her I cards. Think what long-term. she did in that last game is enough to put a stamp on some of these cards because they obviously are Iowa cards. You know, they, they have, you know, uh, interestingly enough, she's Clark 22 as well, which mm-hmm. is Will Clark from the Giants. I don't think there's any connection there, but um, <laughs> maybe she was a fan. That's why she went with number so 22. you're telling me she's going to be on the Golden State yeah, WNBA yeah, yeah, team. Let's go. Yep. Um, but, you know, like Super Fractor, 78K. So the 101 Super Fractor first Bowman sold. Uh, was that this year? Um, yes. All these are this year. January all those this year. 78K. Is that something that Whew. goes up? I mean, because you also got to keep in mind, it's probably not going to be another super fractor. That could be a gold vinyl. Ooh, man, this is such a tough. This is such a tough market to say to say because we don't have too much. We don't have a lot of data on this type of stuff. No, we don't. Uh, we don't have a lot of data. We don't have a lot of history with uh, with uh, women's basketball cards. So, um, man, I I don't know. I, I, she she almost has to also be breaking all kind of records in the WNBA and like willing her team to, to these championships. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I think yeah. it's, we're really in uncharted territory right now. Cause I, you know, I think uh, traditionally you're right. Like the women's college stuff, I think would sell better than the pro stuff because women's even, even before this sort of boom, I think women's college basketball was always a little more popular than WNBA, WNBA. but with this rookie class coming in, where you have not only Caitlin Clark, you have Angel Reese, we have some of the people we mentioned, Paige Beckers, Cameron Brink. These are like, those are four legit names that I think even more casual basketball fans are like, I know who those people are. I know that's big. And all four have rookies in, say, Prism WNBA and in WNBA products. Then this has a chance to be the season where everything changes. And, in regards to collecting speaking of college basketball, basketball i think i read that this is the first time that both a woman and a men's team are in the final four from the same college two of them you have uconn and nc state that's right yes first time two of which them which man the final four. shout out to my Un- insane shout what out are they to doing the, over there at nc state bro, bro weren't they like the 13th seed or something like that they're the 11th seed? seed shout out to what's, what's uh, happening at nc state dude D, what's his name dj burns is that the dude? The big man. The big man. From NC State? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, yeah. right? Ah, man. Shout out to him because I love co- – this is why College Force is so fun because, like, DJ Burns is not going to have an NBA career. Let's just – I mean, I say that with all love because that man is – he's built like a tank. Like, he is built like – like. But it's also like, you know, as like a kid growing up, like you play like pick up basketball and then here comes a dude, like a little heavier set chubby guy coming out and you're like, oh, man. If it, like if this guy's built like that and he's like I'm here to ball, that guy can ball. Yeah, that guy like you don't want to get in between that guy and the paint. So now, shout are out they to playing UConn Burns, on man. Saturday. I believe they're playing. UConn. I have mine on UConn. Yeah, so I mean I UConn is win, UConn is like a freight train right now running through the men's. Tournament. I think they're favored like by eleven or something oh, crazy yeah. like that. Wow. They went what on a thirty zero run in the Elite Eight game. Absolutely insane. Yeah, I feel I I don't know how you let a team go on a thirty zero run, but that's okay. insane. Absolutely say, but yeah, shout out DJ Burns. Uh, well, if, I, I want to find invest in DJ Burns cards. I want a DJ Burns. Yeah. So then another <clears throat> Bowman's Best University, Caitlin Clark out of twenty twenty two, sold for ten uh, ten thousand five hundred, and a dual Superfractor Angel Reese Caitlin Clark dual auto sold for sixty five hundred. I will say this: if I was on the fence about waiting for the WNBA and cashing out on these cards now. I'd probably keep the lower numbered stuff and maybe the more like base stuff, maybe cash it in now, but I could be wrong, but that's just my perspective on it is 
the low number stuff will probably hold its weight and stay uh, long term stay yeah. value mm -hmm. valuable but the uh maybe like the to, like the 2023 Bowman stuff like that she's in may not be one that you want to kind of hold on to. Yeah, absolutely. As a second year college. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, I think there's going to be more interest than ever before in pro, in pro women's basketball. There's going to be more money flowing in with extra expansion teams. I mean, obviously the biggest one, the big news around here, the, oh, that the Bay Area is getting one. Can't wait, yeah. That's it's awesome. going to be a big, big deal. So, And I think there's only going to be – I'll go to opening night for sure. I would love to get yeah, And there was a big opening night for women's soccer here at the yep. Avaya Stadium with yeah. the Bay FC Club. It's yeah. yeah, things are changing. Who's invested? Is, is staff invested in that too? Somebody's invested. I don't in know. That. I don't know. I know that the Mahomes, the the Patrick and Brittany Mahomes are uh, the main like one of the main investors of the Kansas City team that mm. just uh, expanded. So yeah, it's it's some of the biggest names in in men's pro sports are getting behind this. So it's happening. This is a big. It's it's I think a big big shift is happening right now where you're seeing. It Would there ever be a woman school. woman sorry playing in the NBA? Is that possible? Hmm. Will we ever see that crossover, or are we just going to keep it separate? I Could Caitlin Clark compete in the NBA? Hmm. I, 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 with that shot, I know. at that distance, sure. Why not? Why not? Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. It's tough to say, but I know that. Hell, I know. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I don't think. I think there's a good amount of players who. Would have a hard time defending her. You know, it would Absolutely. be cool. You know, they did the uh, Ionoscu Steph three point yeah. champ. Uh, well, the, there is a rumor right now that Clay versus Steph, Clay and Steph versus Clark and Ionescu is happening next year I at Chase Center at the All Star Game. Wow, that's going to be happening next year. That's I was saying rumor. it would be actually kind of cool to do a two on two, but one guy, one girl. Yeah, I like that too. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, do like a and co -ed. Then, and then like, or maybe have like a little mini tournament of like paired up with some of the stars and. You know, bring yep. that out, and you know, then you got you know, and do it for All Star. Bring some attention to the All Star game. Have something different than somebody doing another slam dunk that we've seen ten times oh, already. God, yeah, the slam dunk contest. Let's it's, not talk about the All Star NBA seat weekend. It's just not. It's, it's not. The so same. it is. It is at Chase next year. It's huh? at Chase next year, <laughs> oh, in, go, a, in, in, in honestly a pivotal moment for the All Star game because God, that last. I mean, one yeah, was we, we'll go, let's go. Let's go to that for sure. I don't know what night, but like we'll yeah. for sure go. Uh, Maybe like Saturday night. No, be, yeah. yeah, Saturday is the better time I, to go. I think I would rather watch Saturday night than Sunday night. Especially, if we're being honest. Especially I know you, if that's all, I know you see all the stars on but Sunday. There's so much different things during the su Saturday. Yeah, event, dude, right? I think Isn't that an all-day thing, too? Saturday would be dope. Yeah, Saturday, you get Saturday to, you go early, and I think they do like a shoot-around practice where all the players get to practice a little bit, and then they go and they get in their street clothes, and then all the participating dude, players do their thing. I know so. we're biased, and you said Clay and Steph, but like, if we're, if we're just being honest with ourselves... Clay's not the same guy, not even the same shooter that he was before. No. I, I would almost rather see Steph and like somebody like maybe like Dane. I was going to say Dane. If it's like going to be Bay Area. Anuescu and, and, yeah. and uh, Clark, right? Yeah. I know we, we want. Yeah, I know we say Clay because we love him. But like if we're being honest, like he maybe he shouldn't be in that contest. He might get washed by both of those girls. Yeah, Bro, I was like, going to say, yeah. Uh, but he just uh, did beat Kyle Corver. So on the all-time list. Yeah. The all-time yeah. list. Yeah, if that's like Steph Dane. Then, then we're like, that's a juicy matchup right yeah. there. That would be exciting. Oh but, yeah, yeah. Or bring out like Baron Davis or something, just to like old war. Oh yeah, that'd yeah. be awesome. He did he? <laughs> like, you man. know, it's gonna be Warriors theme because it's gonna be in Chase. Yeah. yeah. So all the OG Warriors are gonna be there. I wouldn't be. I would. I would be surprised. We see Beedrins out there. You know, uh, <laughs> Mikel <laughs> Petrin. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Festus. Yeah. Fe oh no, dude. It's gonna be a Warriors a pretty much Beans like getting out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we need to see who's uh, the dude, who's the guy with the, who's the dude with the big yeah. who's the dude with the big head from Serbia, freaking uh, oh jeez, got the center. He was classic uh, oh, gosh, from a couple of championship back. runs. Oh, from oh uh, 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 maybe he's not from Serbia. No, oh, I know okay. who you're talking about. Uh, yeah, Game Seven, that guy, but he didn't say that on the Warriors. Man, I'm really mad. God, what's his I can't. Name, I know, man. I know. I literally see my head. He still works for the team. You're right. He has like a backup guys center, a bigger head than me. Man, I'm, I'm really. It's, I'm, he was a backup. Center? I keep wanting to say Hito Turkoglu, but that's not who it is. No, it's not who it is. But and I mean, obviously, you guys are not talking about Bogut. Bogut's from no. Australia. No, we're not talking Bogut. Not talking Bogut. Uh, yeah, we got to figure this out. 
This is driving. God, what me the nuts. heck's his name? Yeah, just look up like 2017 Warriors. He, he should he should show up on the roster. He was a backup. Uh, Zaza, uh, Zaza Pachulia. Yes. Oh, Pachulia. Pachulia. Okay. Yeah. He Got was it. the guy. I think he was on the Hawks, and he was like, eh, "Game seven. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Good Classic. stuff. Zaza. Yeah. Zaza. Yeah. He was Zaza. In. Beadrince. Troy Murphy. A Donald Foyle. All the stars are out for I mean, the, our GM year. is part of that team. He could just come out and be like, let's do it. Yeah. 5v5 versus the new Warriors versus oh. the old Warriors. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird seeing Bob Myers on the ESPN like, broadcast, I know. too. Yeah, like, it is weird. Is- will, will the Warriors bring out Gilbert Arenas mm. for the All-Star? Yeah, hell yeah. Why not? You got to. Agent Zero. Got Before he was Agent Zero. And you know the two run yeah. TMC will be there. Yeah. Yep. Know, we, got Gil- we gotta have Gilbert there. Barry shoot, will shoot probably shoot. be out there. Jay Rich for surely. Jay Rich. You know what? He'll be, Jay, the, he'll be Jay, part of the Bring Dunk Jay contest. Rich out of retirement for the slam dunk contest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently that's the only way to revive that thing. There you go. Oh, yeah. Last exactly. All right, guys, it's that time of year. 2024 Bowman is on the horizon, and we've got early pre-sale information from Tops and a checklist that has been out. A month now in advance, which is great. So we can all see, you know, what prospect, uh, what rookie card we want to chase. Um, you know, collectors are kind of being a little bit on the WB side, complaining about the pricing. $250 for, I think, what, maybe 260 for a hobby box with one auto and 499 on a jumbo box. So, I mean, what do you think? Is that kind of in line, Cody, with what you were thinking on pricing? Yeah, that feels about right, especially considering, you know, it, it, it's we're, we're going to go over some of the names here, but you do have a guy in Dylan Cruz who, if he was in Bowman draft, would have likely been the biggest chase in the entire product, even with Wyatt Langford in there, even with all those big names we were chasing. So there's that. You also have the inclusion of Yamamoto, the inclusion of Jung Hoo Lee, the first chance to get their autographs. I know Yamamoto's going to have a couple other things where he's signing, but you have the rookie slash first Bowman attraction there. So there's a lot here. And also maybe if people are complaining about price, it could be maybe the price of getting Pete Rose into Bowman. I don't know. That, that, no, that, that's I something just, to discuss. I mean, I, I mean well, I'm only kidding, but you know. Could be. Could be. Who knows? Uh, I don't know. Which is, I, yeah, which is a nice surprise. Gives me hope that Barry Bonds might be in next year or maybe in draft. Or, That's or one where wrong. I'm like, it's crazy. If you had told me Pete Rose is going to be back in Topps products before Barry Bonds, I would have thought you were crazy because Bonds wasn't banned from the game. Like, Well, I mean, I had heard rumors uh, about a year ago that, that Bonds was going to be back in products, but I have yet to see it. And that and that person is no longer with Topps now uh, anymore. But they had said, hey, we're getting Barry Bonds back. You know, little birdie said, and I was like, great. You know, I was hoping to see him. But maybe Bonds backed out of the deal or they're waiting to use him at the right moment. But uh, I understand, like, you know, hey, it ain't for the kids. Back to the pricing here. And and people are complaining, oh, you've priced me out of the hobby. And, and I think it's like, this is only for breakers, you know, and then breakers are going to make money on this price. And I can't even afford my teams anymore. I mean, it's all relative. Let's just, you know, be devil's advocate. I know people are going to say, well, you guys sell the product. So we have a completely different set po- uh, point of view on it is – it's all relative. If it was a hundred dollar box, then the autos are not going to be worth as much when you pull them because it's now considered a lower end product. So there's a time and a place for lower end products. Bowman has kind of approached the mid tier to high end level. I mean, and you could see on these crazy pricing, you could see the Trout Super Fractor sell for god awful amounts. You could see Dominguez's Super Fractor sell for god awful amounts. This is the first Bowman. This is the first Bowman autograph of 87 guys. And if any of these guys become Shohei Otani or Mike Trout or Bryce Harper, these cards will be the most coveted. So, uh, you know, these, I, I honestly, I'm not surprised. I mean, a, a car 10 years ago costs significantly less than cars cost now. <laughs> Cable costs significantly less than 10 years ago than it costs now. Heck, Big Macs, freaking McChickens, yeah, yeah, yeah. Taco Bell. Yeah, there's no such thing as a dollar menu anymore. No. There's a value menu, which is the greatest trick they've ever pulled. Come on now. I see well, I was surprised. I went to, uh, I had to go to Best Buy yesterday to get some stuff for the new studio we're working on. And uh, I was like, you know, I'm going to get a McChicken. I was like, you know what? I'm going to get two McChickens. And they were doing a BOGO. I didn't even know. I would have paid full pop, but it was like $5 a McChicken, but I got two of them. 
But remember, McChickens used to be a dollar. It was a buck. Yeah, so. it was a buck for a McChicken. What yeah. a world! Kids these days don't know. We we don't know how good we had it. So had it hey, real good. Th- look, and I can say this because uh, our, our our resident In and Out hater Dan isn't here. Um, I'm a resident hater too. Okay, you're right. That's right. I, I forgot. <laughs> I, I feel like Dan is much more vocal about he might be, that yeah. hate. Um, if you, hey, In and Out menu hasn't really changed that much. Maybe maybe a couple cents here and there, but. It's about the same price to get a to get a double double with fries and a, and a soda yep. as it was about ten years ago. So, shout out to them. Yeah, Keep I it. mean it's uh, it's the world we live in, and usually the price falls in line with the product. And honestly, if you don't like the price of the product, don't buy it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you know? it's as simple as that. And and you know what the thing too that and it's I feel like it is the cycle every year of like, look, you, uh, if you don't want to get the hobby box or or the jumbo or whatever. It's cheaper to just wait for the, if you if that's your bag, go find the singles, go get into breaks. There are other options for you guys to do that. And I think the beauty of Bowman is there or there's always a guy who you could just get their auto for, you know, single auto for like 25 bucks or something like that. And then a few years from now, hey, a guy I think I actually talked about in a video not that long ago, right before the season, Blaze Alexander for the Diamondbacks. You could get his first Bowman autos for well under 100 bucks, sometimes under 50 bucks. Yeah. And uh, he's going off for the yeah. Diamondbacks right now. He's actually doing really well. So that's what you got to do. You got to find those diamonds in the rough. That's what the fun is for here for Bowman. Obviously, we're going to talk about some of these big guys, but that's the fun of it is finding these diamonds in the rough. And I think there's a ton here. And that's, you know, and that's good knowledge to kind of pass on if you're a new collector and you maybe don't dabble that much in baseball. Uh, you know, we always get this question when people come in the stream, especially on Bowman Day, who are we chasing? Who are these guys? And one thing to keep in mind is a lot of these guys, it takes three, possibly four years before they're going to get a major league debut. Now, you know, guys like Wyatt Langford, they get fast tracked. That doesn't always happen, but you know, Mike Trout was in 2009 Bowman draft. He was a rookie in 2012. So that's right. three years of work. And then especially if you're getting a guy that's out of high school who's 18, he's going to take a lot more seasoning. He's going to go through your rookie ball, your, you know, your single A, your double A, your triple A, all those things before he possibly gets to the majors. And that is what makes Bowman so special, in my opinion. And uh, shout out to the San Jose Giants is, you know, I as a Giants fan, and you guys see me wear the hat all the time is I get to go to these games and you know, these Bowman guys, a lot of them, you know, stop in San Jose and you kind of get to see them on a more intimate level. You know what I mean? Um, see them play in trip, uh, single a be they're approachable there and kind of follow their career. And it's not just like a guy in basketball. If you pull a guy in basketball and he's already not playing, you already know he's not worth anything. He's probably never going to be the next Zion, John Moran, whoever, you know, the next big rookie is, yeah. or Wemby for that matter. Uh, baseball is a long game, and, and you got guys that kind of come out of nowhere and become stars. Uh, obviously, the big names that, that start usually kind of are the names that say big, but, like, there could be guys like Pockets, like Arstidas Aquino. I know he's not doing well anymore, but had a good run, and people were able to sell some of their cards for, for large amounts. And Bowman is unlike anything else in the hobby when in terms of, like, the prospect and – collegiate sports they've tried to do it you know with Bowman's best you and stuff like that it's just not the same thing yeah I think and that's what makes it fun too from a breaking perspective of like if you're saying who am I chasing this year well heck sometimes it's fun to just pick a team and say oh that team's a little cheaper than the other teams grab them you never know if you hit the next you know that guy that like we said there's there's a few guys that we've we've mentioned that uh, nobody saw coming right Exactly. Does it feel like it, that's the thing? I need to see a comparison to the prices last year. Like, it doesn't feel like it's that much of a leap, like a massive leap that feels egregious, something to talk about. Just kind of feels like maybe a steady progression, more, less about the product, maybe more, like you said, about just kind of the general state of the economy. So, I don't know. It, it's, it's tough to say. And, like, but again, there are, like, there is a guy in here in Dylan Cruz who is. One of the biggest prospects in baseball could be on, not could, almost certainly will be with the Major League Club in the Nationals this year. Uh, Walker Jenkins is a, is a really hot prospect out of high school, 10th rate prospect for the Twins. A couple other guys, Red Sox catcher Kyle Teal, guy who was a highly ranked draft pick, top 15 draft pick last year. Uh, he'll be in there. Aiden Miller for the Phillies as well, top uh, 60 prospect. 
So, and then, yeah, we mentioned Jung Lee, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, first chance to get those autos, too. So there's plenty. Yeah, plenty I mean, I mean even Shohei's first uh, Dodger yep. Bowman That's card. A, will all, have the, value. all the Shohei Dodger stuff is out of everything this year. I feel like that first Dodger stuff, is, it's going to have that feeling of like the first LeBron Lakers stuff where it's like, well, I just got to get the first version of that thing. It's going to be all yeah. year long. That makes sense. Well, you know yeah. what? People didn't catch it on on the games, and uh, you know how they did the uh, Otani bets thing. Yes. Well, if you look at the yes. lineup, it's Otani bets free man. Oh. So Otani bets. He's a free man. He's a free man. That's that's a good point. <laughs> this is a good point. <laughs> that's good. That's good. I like that. They just need another name that yeah. corresponds with. We we like were, gamble or something. I brought up. Okay, I'm going to bring up something crazy. We're doing a little a little off on the baseball talk, but it's baseball talk. It, watching this unstoppable Dodger team the last couple of days, at what point and what team? Because I think it's going to happen. What point do we get the Barry Bonds treatment for all three of the top guys in the in the lineup? Do they just go f it? We're we're just going to walk the bases loaded because I don't want to deal with these guys. Yeah. We'll take our chances with Max Muncy and, and Will Smith. We were watching the game on Monday while we were doing the Fanatics live stream, and I was like, I think the All Star team is blue and white. I mean, pretty it's much. Like it's like you blink and they're up one nothing. Every like it's just like bets gets on. Uh, o- the fact that Otani hasn't even got hot yet is like it's going to be horrifying when he's finally on. And then it's like, and then Freeman gets a double. It's like cool. They're up one nothing, and I haven't even gotten into my seat yet. Like. It's an unstoppable like machine. I will say that Otani's kind of a choke artist in big moments of the game, though. Like when they need him to get a game winning RPI. It hasn't happened yet. It yeah. hasn't. And yeah, Freeman is saving him. Teoscar Hernandez has been saving him. So it's it's only a matter of time. Though, I think it's until... first team in like eight not eight nine st- games to get over five runs. Yep. Every game, something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're... I'm glad we have one more game and then on on to the home stand. Yeah. So. Damn, yeah. dude. Judge need to get up on that uh, Dodger blue. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it feels like an inevitability <laughs> at this point. I just am accepting the fate of like every good player is going to be a Dodger, and they're all it's, they're going to be the best team if they can, if, if if a team can get one of three in a series. To me, that is basically winning a series against the Dodgers. You won one game against them, great. You won the series. Yeah, Good I just got to I mean, wait till we play them again and those <laughs> those pitchers are in mid-season. Exactly. Form, It'll know. be a little different. It'll, It'll be, be a little, little different. different. Well, we'll see. we'll see. Um, but back to Bowman. I mean, I broke it down by the prospect auto. So there's a couple things to note. Um, okay. Reds zero prospect autos, but they have Ellie and Strand and uh, the guy. For the got rookie checklist. The other guy got they got suspended. Noel right? Marte. Yeah, there are there are a lot of rookies in there. Rookies. For the, yeah, the but as we know, rookies seem to be harder to hit in Bowman. They don't come out as yeah. often. Yeah. So. Uh, except the Otani year. Yes. Which you was uh, technically you could look at that look at that as a, as if it was he was the first Bowman. So they did they did include him more than probably we would see a normal rookie yeah and i don't know if they just have them sign less or what maybe we'll see some rookies pop out more than normal but they're just mm-hmm. something to kind of keep in mind when you're buying into breaks uh, as far as my initial pricing i had the reds higher than they would with because of the uh, they have no prospects usually i price those teams pretty low but with ellie and strand and you know those guys guardians zero autos as well uh zero prospect autos uh they do have like somebody on the retail list or something like that but i'm not going off of that uh, Dodgers also zero prospect autos. Yeah. Oh, and we didn't even mention the Reds also, of course, all those rookies you mentioned, and of course the Pete Rose retro. Yes, as yes, well, yeah. Which that still makes it a very desirable spot. Yep. Retro fractor. Yep, retro fractor auto. auto. Yep, sweet. What, so what was the last product Pete Rose was in, by the way, real quick? I don't know. I know From he's Tops? Been, I know he's yeah. in uh, Panini and I saw uh, there was some – people were suggesting that there was an accidental insert in, like, the mid-2000s at some, in a set, but that was it. I think it was, like, 91 or 92 was the last time they ever had anything related to Pete Rose. So is this – the MLB telling Tops Fanatics, like, okay, we're okay with you including him in the set at this point? The only thing I could think is it's are the rules a little different for Bowman? That's the only it's still an officially licensed MLB product, so I don't see how it could be. Yeah. But maybe they're saying <laughs> Bowman's fine. Anything else, no. Maybe they're can't saying be in flagship. Maybe can't be no they're flagship saying stuff. perhaps we're gonna let Otani go. <laughs> and this is part oh, so of the, to Otani. This is part of letting him go because we're okay. <laughs> With having Pete in, in products I now. would agree with you, but I'm sure this decision was made like six, seven months ago. <laughs> yeah. So oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Unless they knew that long ago about they knew the t- It's coming down the pipeline. Right, right. 
but yeah, Dodgers zero autos, but Yamamoto, yeah. um, you know, rookies, and and which I believe will be besides Sterling will be his uh, first uh, rookie auto and probably his most coveted. Yeah, um, and then Definitely. obviously some Shohei. I didn't see any Shohei autos, but they'll have the parallels and all that stuff for him. Uh, Marlon zero autos, um, and really no other thing to chase. Nothing so they'll be notable. very very cheap. Uh, Cardinals zero autos, but I believe they do have Bob Gibson. Yep, Bob Gibson. Ro- Bob Gibson retrofactor, no autos, obviously, but yeah, Bob Gibson retrofactor. And is, is this the most amount of no auto teams we've had in Bowman I've in a while? Seen, yeah, I mean, I'm going just prospects because that's what people buy Bowman for. Exactly. Like the Rays have zero autos too, but they have Junior Caminero right. as a rookie auto. Yeah. So I, I would say like. No team has no autos. They don't have prospect. They don't autos. have prospect yeah. autos. And then a team like the Angels leads the pack with six um, autos uh, prospects, and the Yankees also have six. And the Yankees have uh, Jason Dominguez on the rookie side of yeah. things too. So they're going to be a big a chase, pretty, pretty big chase. Huge. And you got yeah, like Cody mentioned already, you've got some guys in the top hundred. Kyle Teal ranked thirty nine. He's on the Red Sox. Um, Matt Shaw's in here at 51, but he's not his first Bowman. Yeah. Uh, you've got uh, Walker Jenkins is the number 10 prospect. In he's going to be probably your second. He's easily the second biggest chase in this one. The what, twins, what team is he on? Twins. twins. The Twins. Got and, it. And twins, by the way, last like five years, I feel like they have always had like, I feel like they do well in Bowman. They have been a really like sneaky good team in Bowman with you. I mean, you go back all the way to even Royce Lewis to then uh, Austin Martin. Yep. Uh, now, with it, like there, there have been a lot of big prospects who have come through with the Twins. Not many that have clicked, but they have been there. Yeah, he's ranked first in the organization, obviously. Yep. Aiden Miller, Phillies, uh, ranked 58, third in the organization. Paul Skeens has a second first Bowman, I guess you would call it. Yeah. Um, Sebastian Walcott also has a second first Bowman. Mm-hmm. Wyatt Langford's in here as a second first Bowman. And then you got Dylan Cruz, who's a number seven ranked uh, prospect yeah. in baseball. So, and he's first in the Nationals organization. A lot of rumors flying around that he was a Panini guy. So, obviously, that doesn't seem to be true. Not so. the case. Yeah. So that was just a rumor. Must have been. Yeah. I, I, yeah, we would have. It would have been certainly confirmed by. Now. I mean, now he did have. He does have autos in Panini. Probably. I yes. took. I took. He's that, an elite extra. I saw that on social media, and I was like, okay. Maybe they did sign him to an exclusive, and then Topps was able to like you know get get him in there to sign before this deal was in place. But now it seems like that that deal never existed. No. I guess with Panini. Yeah, I mean, I, let's hope that those cards are live so that they there isn't any cloud of uh, that of, would. Of doubt. Oh boy, yeah, I don't even want to. Yeah, yeah, I don't even want to know what they would do. But I kind of feel like Topps they they wanted to they probably were wanted to make sure they got them before it was revealed that he was in it, right? Because nobody knew that he was going to be in. Bowman necessarily. No. Well, we were looking through the well, draft we all, yeah. checklist and we're like, we're, he was obviously the big name. Missing. We all suspected it. We all kind of were like, well, okay, Dylan Cruz is going to anchor Bowman. That's what they're going to do, which, yeah, felt felt right. Like, felt did. like what they were, even before I saw a draft, I'm like, they're going to split it somehow where it's going to be Skeens here or there. Like, it always makes sense. They usually will go, if it's a number one pitcher, they'll go them and draft. And then hit her to anchor, you know, the, the the flagship release. Yeah, and another, I know guys in draft were saying one of the guys uh, me, me, uh, that people were missing out on was Arjun Nimala from uh, the Blue Jays, mm. who's the third yeah. ranked prospect on theirs and their organization. Not a top hundred, but probably another uh, nice name to chase as well. Uh, he's a shortstop. You know, one of the other things too is there's not a lot of pitchers, and I think Tops has listened over the years. I'm going to sort this sheet. Uh, My pitchers to see how many actual pitchers there are. I got one, only one left-handed pitcher who actually be, he is number 80 in, on the top 100 list for the Giants, uh, Carson Wisenhunt. Oh, yeah. No relation to Ken Wisenhunt. I had to look that up. No. Um, and let's see what else. Uh, yeah, there were not a ton. There's like four. There's like five pitchers out of 87. There's not a ton. And the guys who are in there are pretty notable <clears throat> names, too. So, uh, Cody, are you conceding that this is not the year of the pitcher? <laughs> that their first Bowmans are finally going to, we're going to finally have some big sales of pitchers in uh, Bowman. Uh, it really, look, Paul Skeens is still out there. But yeah, the Paul Skeens market didn't fly off the show. I mean, it's still good, but. Uh, oh, I think your mic there. Can you uh, adjust your, I think your cord might have unplugged real quick. Cord? Yeah, it's a little fuzzy. Sorry. 
Hello, hello. There testing? we go. We got it now. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, in terms of pitchers too, but I guess you could look at it a couple ways. Yes, the hobby doesn't like pitchers. They um, never are. They're just. But anyway. are we going to miss on the next Clayton Kershaw because we're like so laser focused on hitters, right? Is there not going to be a first Bowman? of a guy that could dominate for the next 10 years. I will say Skeens. I still am going to hold out hope that – because I think Skeens is probably going to get called up pretty quick. He's already in AAA, and I think they just wanted to give him a couple more a couple more starts. That Pittsburgh rotation has plenty of room for him, and uh, Pittsburgh off to a, a really nice start right now. I think they're 5-0, and oh, maybe 4-1 since, uh, uh, since the season started with a lot of really exciting young talent. So – that could be the type of thing too where like if pittsburgh goes on a nice little run here to start the season we're like wow surprising team and then they call up paul Skeens. that's just it kind of reminds me of when strasburg got called up where it's just like all this excitement everything's building and then boom the guy is here uh and it's this perfect timing that i think could really propel his market and it could still be the year of the pitcher. Well, see, it's the thing about, uh, and a lot of people weren't in the hobby this long, but that's when we got in was the Strasburg mania. But the thing about what they did with Strasburg was, is he got called up. He didn't have any cards yet. And they took his base card last minute and had him sign it, numbered him, and put him in that Bowman. So it was literally that's like crazy. he had his start and then Bowman came out the next day. And it was like, it was like really impeccable time. So. Were they redemptions at no, the time? they were just live paper base. Wow. So there was no chrome, and then they held out, and they had him sign chrome for Bowman chrome. Right. But his first Bowman was a paper, and they had him sign, you know, on the on the paper autos and stamp them. Wow. Or if they were base, they weren't stamped. Yeah. Wow. So it was, like, something that they haven't done ever again. But, like, I think he came out in his first game, I think he threw, like, 14 strikeouts. So it was, like, oh, my God. Like, it was, oh, yeah. it was insane. It right? still is. Like, I still remember it so well, that, that debut. It was incredible. One of the best debuts ever. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, I mean, obviously they planned before the start, but maybe they heard that he was going to be called up and they, uh, you know, kind of rushed to get it in the packs. Yeah. And then he got Tommy John and Bowman Chrome just like completely fell off the face. Tommy of the John. Earth. And then when he was back, they put him on the pitch count. Oh, sorry, we made the playoffs, but he's not going to pitch in the playoffs. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I think a lot of teams learn from that. I know there's some like a little bit of like it all paid off with the World Series run, but the career never was what quite. Well, what and it that's was. actually Strasburg. Like we may have told the story on the podcast before, but Strasburg, I kind of started Mojo Break because yeah. what happened was is we went in the shop and there was actually a shop selling uh, regular Bowman uh, Jumbo for like 140, right? And I had looked on Blowout or DA, whoever back then, and I was like, man, they're selling them for 210. I'm like, so the shop like didn't correct itself and sell it at the market. I think it was like a comic book store. It's called Heroes. And I was calling around to see who oh, had sure. it, right? And they had it. So I was like, man, that's like $60 profit a box. So I'm like, all right, let's get a wholesale license and let's pre-order Bowman Chrome because he's going to have his first Bowman Chrome auto in that. So, you know, two weeks later, it gets Tommy John. Bowman Chrome still like two months away. And we're like, all right, we were just planning on selling the boxes on eBay. Our cost on Bowman Chrome, I'm like, this is going to make people laugh, is $39, right? So we're like, <laughs> all right, let's put them up at like 60, 70 bucks or whatever. There was sellers selling them for 29 So just, they were just selling out them of it. under cost because they already had foreseen that this product was going to be a dud because no Strasburg was in it, all this other hoopla, whatever. And this is when it was only one auto. There was just one auto. There was no other formats. So we're like, we can't sustain this. We, 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 you know, what are we going to do? Like, we can't, like, we can't buy something for 39 and sell it for 29 And that was, like, literally all the money we had at the time. So that's when we, like, started figuring out how to do breaks at that point. Mm -hmm. So because uh, when we started it, we were under NorCal sports cards, and we were just going to buy boxes, put them on eBay, and sell them. That was the business model. Yeah. And then we're like, okay. And then we saw some guys, like, uh, Firehand and stuff doing breaks, but doing them more as, like, a friend thing. Like, uh, you know, I'm going to do this case of Bowman Chrome. I'm going to keep a spot, and then you guys – buy a spot, send PayPal, and I'll record the video tomorrow, right? And that's how yeah. they did things. We're like, how can we turn this into a, like more of a business where yep. anybody can come and buy in rather than being in a club? So that was, yeah, Strasburg kind of helped. Strasburg, thank yeah. you. Here we are all these years later, and so what you're telling me is <laughs> some, some budding young breaker is looking at Paul Skeens and going, that's the guy. We're all going to invest in him, and we're going to have the next revolution in breaking because of Paul Skeens. That's, <laughs> that's what, that's did what Strasburg I retire, by the way? I don't even know. It's a, That was such a weird... Like, he retired. The team announced he retired, and then he went, what? No, I'm not retired, man. I'm going to try. And then it's all – it's still, I don't think, been resolved. 
So, I'm like, yeah. how many guys are still playing since we started breaking? It's just starting to weigh thin. Gonna say, oh, yeah, man, it's starting yeah. to thin out a little bit. That, that generation is like, is out on the out. It's the young guys now. Yeah. But I was gonna say, um, yeah, but don't you remember a few years ago? Because tops fanatics has really switched things up, um, and and really, um, like you were just going over only five pitchers out of eighty something. Remember that, um, you know, during the I think it was the, one of the Bowmans during the pandemic. There was like hell of pitchers, and it was like it's it's like a it's like a you got to balance it because it's like. They had a lot of pitchers, of course, that year, whatever year Bowman it was. But then they also still had a lot of hitters as well. Yeah. Um. But then like people would always complain, like, man, I, I got that we do we do a box and the people were like, damn, that was all pitchers in there. Right. Only pitchers. Yeah. No hitters, all yeah. pitchers. I mean, you know, it, to 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 cap it off, but the one thing is, you mentioned another pitcher, Yamamoto. I didn't even mention him. Yamamoto is going to be a pitcher where you pull that auto, it is going to be like that was the biggest hit. If that's your case hit, you are not upset about that. Like that's that's huge. Yeah. What's his ERA right now? Uh, it's like he had a good start in his last outing, five innings pitched. So it's only two starts into his major league career. We'll see. So he, so what, 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 it, what is the, is that, is this the, this is Bowman's going to be his best card well, so far? Rookie be. auto, yeah. It's be similar to showing. Okay. Yeah. And, and, you know, it won't, I'm assuming it won't say first Bowman on there unless they change it no, up somehow. Uh, no, no, I would say rookie. rookie. Yeah, I would say yeah. rookie. Um, but, but does he have it, autos as a rookie in that set or just base? Yeah, base and base rookies and. Yeah. There's autos. also some other insert autos of him as well, I yep. want to say in this yep. one too. So there's, it's going to be the most. Chances. Thanks, Sterling's only got the base auto right now. This is going to be the most chances to get different autos for with him. Num- with parallels, yeah. Yeah, and there's like there. One thing I wish they would just do away with is the ultimate autograph thing. So stupid. It's what, it's it's a, a ultimate autograph book card of Yanquil Fernandez, Drew Jones, Roman Anthony, Paul Skeens, Joe Andre Vargas, Max Clark, Walker Jenkins, Spencer Jones, Gabriel Gonzalez, Samuel Zavala, Kevin Alcantara, Tamar Johnson, George Lombard, Jackson Holiday, Jackson Merrill, James Wood, Jackson Churio, Marcelo Meyer, Sebastian Walcott, Wyatt Langford, Flynn Sestelin, Cole Young, Colson Montgomery, and Ethan Salas. It's one-on-one, one card. It's a lot of guys. I mean, I think it's a one-on-one. It's got to be, yeah. Uh... Dumb. <laughs> Who wants that? And I'm not even saying because we have to random it. But I'm just saying it's it's dumb. Yeah. I mean, generously, 75 percent of those guys probably are not going to be n- notable Anything. in five, yeah, ten years. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's one thing to have like a tops triple threads, which we miss. I know they didn't do it this year, but like it's one thing to have all like Hall of Famers on there. Or yeah. All Yankees or something like even that. the one there was one a couple of years ago. It was like all the stars of today, where it was like Soto, Acuna. It was all the guys. I'm like, yeah. Maybe there's a couple guys that it won't look great in a few years, but most of those guys are pretty safe. Yeah, the, putting all prospects on one card, it is it is kind of silly. Um, that I mean, it's cool as a novelty at first, but then like you're, you guys are right, um, only a couple guys of these guys are going to pan yeah, out, and then yeah. and then the the card is just going to be like, you remember that year? And it's yeah. probably all stickers too. So they, it's yeah. just, definitely yeah. that is an instant sell. If if there's a buyer, like cool, you want yeah. it? Here you go, take it. Yeah. Well, guys, that's the end of the Bowman segment and the end of the show. Be uh, be sure to check out MojoBreak.com. We should have Bowman up, at least jumbo cases, by next week, I would say, so you guys can get in and pre-sell your favorite team or whatever guy you're chasing. So uh, be sure to uh, jump on that, and uh, we'll definitely see you guys next week on The Hype, full squad. And uh, check us back. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and check out the breaks on MojoBreak.com. 